So, Father, we just, um, we sit at your feet, Lord, and we give it all to you. Because we know in whom we believe and we are persuaded that you be who you are, God. That you are able to take and keep whatever we commit into your hands. And so today, Lord, we commit ourselves into your hands. We're committing our problems into your hands. And we're just asking God that your peace from heaven falls upon each and every person right where they need it because every person's need is different. <laughs> I ask, Lord, that you would just show favor. Show favor in the circumstances that all of us face. I ask God that you would just anoint this service and the Holy Spirit come like you've never moved in here before, move in a new way. Sometimes we get lackadaisy and that's the last thing we want to do. So Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, while we were singing... I had asked the Holy Spirit just to give me what he wanted for us to hear tonight. And the very first thing that he brought to my um, heart and mind um, is about the sinful woman, uh, about the woman, the sinful woman forgiven. But before we go there, I'm going to go to my go-to because um, and just one of those places where I didn't get here till 5, which is unusual for me. And um, everything that could have went a little topsy-turvy today went that way, all the way up to the very beginning of the service. But see, God is still faithful. I mean, what the enemy wants to distract and take away and cause confusion, if we can just remember that God is with us in all things and he's always doing something and we just need to look for him. And so I just want to um, just confess this word uh, to you all today. And it says, I know in whom I believe and I am persuaded that he being God is able to keep whatever I commit into his hands. So tonight I commit each and every one of you out there and in this room into his hands that you're his people, not my people. And he will minister to you by his spirit because that is who he is. Amen. I know in whom I believe because he is God, the one and only God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I know that he cares about me as an individual, but he also cares about you. And I know that he knows my need long before I ever am going to know what my need is. And he knows my need tonight, long before I got out of bed this morning. Amen. So I know in whom I believe, and it is him that is able to do all things, but it's up to me to commit the things into his hands. So right now, in Jesus' name, I commit everything into his hands because I depend on him, because he is the great I am, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I commit my mind to him. I commit my marriage. I commit the church. I commit my children and my grandchildren. I commit my parents to you, Lord. I commit this church to you, Father God, the property, the building, and everything belongs to you and Lord you keep it you take care of it you do God what you want to do and I pray that we all move when you're ready to move on what needs to happen in the future I thank you God that there's um, life and death in the power of my tongue and tonight I'm speaking life over all of your people in Jesus name not only over my life but all your people and everybody that's listening Father, that is out there and all the people that are here tonight. And Lord, I speak a blessing over each and every one of them tonight, that they are the head and not the tail. Amen. And the Lord says to tell you guys tonight that some of you have been walking with your tails tucked, like you've got something to be ashamed of, like you've got something that's going on. And the Lord says, untuck that tail, rise up. I'm your glory and the lifter of your head. He says, stop counting, tra stop counting the cracks in the cement and start counting the clouds in heaven because you're going to be looking up instead of down, says the Lord. I also speak a blessing over you and your children and your children's children because that's what the word talks about. So I'm going to release it in the atmosphere tonight because God said this is what you're going to do tonight. And so I bless you, I bless your children, and I bless your children's children. And that's just the way it is because that's what the word says. And regardless of what you see or what you feel, what you smell, or even what you think, God is still on this throne and he says bless. And so we're blessing tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So he that is in me is greater than he that is in this world. Therefore, he that is in you is greater than he that is in this world. And he says, if I be for you, then who can be against you? Have you forgotten that I am the great I am? When Moses said, who do I say is sending me? He says, tell them I am sending you. I am the hope and the
the future. I am the light of the world. I am your loving heavenly father. I am there in the darkness. I am there in the light. I am there all the time with you. I am the great I am, says the Lord. Amen. And I'm choosing you, and I'm choosing you, and I'm choosing you, and I'm choosing all of you to take my word out by my spirit and release it into the atmosphere. Start walking the streets. Start walking your neighborhood. Start walking your community. Start walking around your house. Walk around your property and start claiming it for the kingdom of heaven that the move of God will be on this property as well, on your property, and so that your children's children will know who the great I am is, says the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So it is true that he that is within me is greater than he that is in the world, but it's also true for you. Not only are you the head and not the tail, but you are above and not beneath. You are my chosen, my royal priesthood set apart for such a time as this, says the Lord. Are you ready? Are you ready or are you distracted? Are you distracted by stuff? God says, get them distractions out of the way because I want to use you more than you want to be used. You think you want to be used? I got some news for you, says the Lord. I want to use you more than you want to be used, says the Lord. Right, James? <laughs> good to agree with me at this very moment. That would be good. I have a power source inside of me, and you have a power source inside of you that is able to do abundantly more than you could ever imagine or ever think because the, the power source in you is Jesus Christ, the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit that's been given to us because he went and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father so that we could be empowered by the Holy Spirit to complete the work and the fullness of heaven, kingdom on earth, down here on this earth, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You cannot change a thing in your own strength. It all has to be changed in my strength, says the Lord. But are you willing to take your most precious belonging? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to be used of me? Not that I need anything that you have, says the Lord, but I want to know, am I the most important thing in your life? Do you believe when I say that I am a jealous God, that I am a jealous God? I can have anything, and I have all of you, and I love you beyond your, your total imagination. But he says, is there something that you're hanging on to that you won't give over because you're afraid I'm going to take it from you? <laughs> he says, I'm life. Yes. And in me, all things breathe. That's right. I want the best for you. That's right. I want to give you the best. I want to bless you. Why would I take something from you that you're afraid I'm going to take? Why don't you just give it to me? I'm probably going to give it back. Right? That's right? I can remember sitting in those times with the Lord and being afraid to give him something because I thought for sure I would lose it. But he always gave it back to me. Because he wasn't after the thing. He was after the position in my heart. Amen. That's right. And when you understand that it's the position of our hearts that he needs to be Lord of, it's not that hard to do. That's right. <laughs> but see, the enemy brings fear. But I want you to know that the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives inside of you and lives inside of me. He says, fear is not from me. Fear is what paralyzes the world. Fear is what paralyzes marriages and relationships and ministries. Fear is not from me, says the Lord. He says, life is from me. It says in the word of God that the enemy came only to steal, kill, and destroy. That's all he came for. But he came to bring you and I life and life abundantly. But not just us, the whole world, if they'll receive it. But most of the time we won't receive it because it's hard for us to comprehend. And we don't even understand that that over there that's being stolen and that over there that's being destroyed, that it's the hand of the enemy. Not a person. Not a movement. But a spirit. A dark spirit. But I want you to know <laughs> that he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Amen? And he wants to move in you first and then through you. But if we don't understand that we're the head and not the tail,
fail if we don't understand that we're above and not beneath we'll never stand up and do what God has asked us to do amen or even surrender everything that we're supposed to surrender amen see I love this go-to because all it does is get my engine started that's it you got to put gas if you want the engine to start and run amen gas and it ain't the bad kind it's the good stuff amen I'm going to continue to trust the Lord with all of my heart. And I want to release to you tonight for you to trust him with all of your heart. Not lean to your own understanding because that's what we do. But acknowledge him. I'm finding the more that I acknowledge him in, the greater my day is, the better results I have, and the better peace I have. Because I've invited the Prince of Peace into my day. I've invited the King of Kings into my day. I've invited the one that is truly above and not beneath into my day because he's amazing. And because I've invited him in, he comes in and he starts to release his glory and he starts to release his love and he starts to release his plan. And I get out of the way so that his plan is greater than my plan because he is the great I am. <laughs> so I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. And I'm going to ask the Lord to be the Lord of my life. How about you? Amen. <laughs> Amen and amen. So, Holy Spirit, thank you that you are El Shaddai. That you are El Shaddai. That you're Elohim. Thank you that you are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me. That gives me the strength that I need when I am weak. Because it says in your word that when I am weak, you are strong. And all of a sudden, this supernatural, like, strength yeah. starts to move in me first yeah. and then through me. And then all of a sudden, a boldness starts to well up because it's not pride. It's the boldness of the Lord. It's like an inner confidence that all of a sudden, you're like, SpongeBob, you know. <laughs> you know how he's got to have square shoulders. All of a sudden... You like start to pull them shoulders back and you put that chest out and you straighten that back and you lift that head and you realize that you belong to God. Amen. God Almighty, truly. And that's what I'm releasing to you tonight. Amen. Just greater faith because you need greater faith than what you have today. I need greater faith than what I have today. I need greater life and zealousness than what I have today. I need greater communion with the Holy Spirit than what I have today. But so do you. You see, if we invite him in, he will come. Just like when we ask Jesus to become our Lord and Savior and that we believe that he was the Son of God and all of a sudden, oh, we became saved by a supernatural act. We got a brand new spirit. A spirit that was without sin. Sin that God put in me and you. And now the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, however you want to say it, can now come and commune in you and in me because we are cleansed from the inside out. That's the supernatural salvation moment right there. But yet, we're going to miss so much more. We want to lead people to Christ, but now we need to help people follow after Christ and for them to understand who they are because who they are and what they think they are are two different things because when you first come to Christ and I first come to Christ, we're nothing but a hot mess. And we think, oh my gosh, I just got saved and I just went out and did what I did last night the night before I got saved. Well, how did that happen? I must not be saved. No, you're probably saved. But your, your, your flesh, your soul, man, has not caught up with your spirit, man. And you have to learn to feed your spirit, man, so that your spirit, man, starts to control your soulish, man, so that you can live the abundant life that Jesus is talking about. Amen. He's not talking about abundance like you're going to have all this stuff because everybody's not meant to have all this stuff. I'm going to tell you, probably, if I had all this stuff, I can remember when I sold my motorcycle. I said, God, why didn't I sell it two years ago? He said, because you wouldn't have done what 
the money what I had planned for that money. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. You're, you're so good, God. But that whole two years, I kept saying, well, I wasn't sold. How come? God, you told me to not ride it anymore. You told me to sell it. I'm not. It's sitting there. It's pretty and inert. It's not going anywhere. So nobody's buying my motorcycle. It was gorgeous. I had it custom painted. And then the guy painted it black that bought it. <laughs> like, broke my heart. But see, God needed me to hear him. So that I would do with the money what he wanted me to do. Now he can trust me yes. with more and more and more. Yeah. But two years prior to that happening, I would have been like, yay, let's party. Not really like party party, but party shop, something besides what I did with it. Can I tell you that God is changing your character? Amen. I, said it, I said this the other day, and I'm going to say it again because God is speaking to me. And I've been thinking about it, and I've been really pondering it. What is the call on my life going to look like? And I'm not trying to get a hold of God. Three months from now. Can my character today handle what's going to come in three months? That's right. What if this church got packed in the next three months, which it's been packed before. But what if God said go to two services? Because there's more coming and you, you need to have two services. What would my character do? My character would be, yeah, okay, God, I'm going to do it. Or what I would complain and murmur and think, how am I going to get two services and how am I going to get enough people to hire in two services? Probably that. I would hope not. But can I tell you that God has something planned for all of you? That's right. But maybe you're in the process of having your character transformed so that you can walk in the call that God has on your life. That's right. And not everybody's called to have money. Not everybody's called to preach the word from, from a pulpit. But everybody is called to be the ministers of the gospel and go out and bring the word to the world. Not everybody's supposed to be a business owner. Not everybody's supposed to be able to play guitar and lead worship. Not everybody's supposed to be um, a Sunday school teacher. But willing, would you be willing if we went to two services? Would your, is your character caught up with being able to do whatever even though you think you can't lift and you can't this? Well, you don't have to. Or we don't have any babies really anymore except that one. And she stays in here because she's learned how to preach. <laughs> That's right, Trish, she knows. I hear God say, get ready. I hear him saying, get ready. See, we fight change. We fight change. We don't want change. We don't want any more on our plate. Jan, you say to me, you can do more. You can do more. Now, I get to tell her that. Yeah. Or I get to repeat it to Tammy. Or I can tell her. Or I can tell her. I can tell you, you can do more. Stop complaining and it won't hurt so bad. <laughs> because we feel like we've our capacity is reached. But if you want more of God. Amen. How are you going to get more of God right. if you want to stay in your old wine skin and yeah. he wants to put new wine in you? Yeah. You're not going to handle it. You're going to burst and it's going to spill all over. So as you allow him to transform you and who you are and all your thoughts and your isms. <laughs> Everybody's got isms. Yeah. But the thing is, if you stay in that old wine skin, you're not going to be able to produce That's right. what the new wine is going to do. Right. Oh. I used to think, what is that about that parable in that Bible? But the more that I walk in Jesus, the more that I know, and it doesn't just happen once, he's continuously changing us. Amen. He's continuing to say, get off that old man and put on the new. Get off that old man and put, even that old man of, of Christ being religious and learning and growing, get off that old man and put on the new. I got new things I want to do in you. Will you step out? Will you do this? Will you do this? Will you do that? Will you? Will you? Will you? Will you? He's looking for the willing because he said, you are my royal priesthood. That's right. Set a time, set apart for such a time as this. And this time has not come yet, but it definitely hasn't come. It's not over. It is coming. Are you willing? Are you willing to clean the bathrooms and, and clean up, throw up? Are you willing to park cars? Are, are
are you willing to go out in the community and do a food drive for hurting families? Are you willing? I think we are. But we really don't know unless we get asked and those tests come. And I promise you when the tests come and the growth comes and the things happen, you're going to have a hard time getting rid of that old man. Well, I want to be first or I want to be last or, oh, don't ask me. You know, just let the character that you are today be changed for the call that he's going to call you to tomorrow. Amen. Be who you are in Christ today. Be in him. Do what he's asking you to do today, but don't get stuck in yesterday when he's going to move you forward in him Amen. for tomorrow. Amen. If we don't invite him in every single day, he's not going to come. You may be like, oh, excuse me, Tim, you forgot me today. Man, I had such a rotten day. He goes, um, that's, I was trying to, like, catch you, but you were woke, woke up running this morning. You didn't have time. To, I, Tim didn't tell me anything. I'm just using him because I can, because he won't get offended. Right, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is I'm learning more and more and more. Even I was gone yesterday, and I had an amazing time. It was like, first thought, okay, God. I didn't have to war. I didn't have to do a bunch of praying for a lot of people. I just said, Lord, I need you. Right. In order to accomplish what's on my plate today, God, I need you. I need you. It didn't look bad. But it can go bad. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord that establishes his step. So I had my whole day today planned out, right down to the isms. And it started out the way I planned it. It was good. It was okay. It was awesome. And all of a sudden, things started switching up on me. I don't do well with switching up when I have a plan. It don't go well for me. But the longer I went into the day, the more changes there were. And I, it was very unsettling for me because I don't like that. Because I function in this over here. And God says, will you get over your functioning over here? And would you function over here? Because this is where I'm at. This is you over here. It's got to be this way, this way, this way, this way. This is my plan, God. Follow me. And he's like, Joyce, over here I am. Hello, come on over to this side. Make, make some adjustments. Let's change your character along the way and stop your grumbling and complaining and just go do it. Amen way to this service tonight yeah. <laughs> one thing after another I didn't get here till five that's unheard of you can't come in at five o'clock when you're gonna have pre-service at 530 and be okay and I wasn't and God is saying I'm putting some new wine in that old wine skin it's time to change it up Amen. get out of that old wine skin because some days you're going to run like that until 5 o'clock and you better be ready in and out of season. Don't think that you can plan and have two and a half hours, which was my plan today, to be here to get everything done that needed to be done. It didn't happen. My character was stretched and it split my skin. <laughs> and all that great wine that had been fermenting was running out. <laughs> and it wasn't the Holy Spirit <laughs> but can I say to you I'm okay I survived it and y'all are surviving it with me right <laughs> right David David had to admit I was right tonight it was tough for him I said David just a minute I, I, I made the call oh pastor 25% okay oh no 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 it was 99.9 .9. I was right because we spar back and forth. But if he would have said that to me probably an hour and a half prior and he was sparring with me, I would have been like, I don't want to hear it. Just agree with me. <laughs> I know I was right anyways. <laughs> but can I just tell you? I didn't know we were going to go here tonight. Tammy, go find the scripture for me on the wineskin for me, would you please? I just want to go there because this is what I feel. I feel like the Lord 
wants to do some transforming tonight in our hearts. To those that are here and those that are listening and those that will hear later, he's like, get over it. I'm, I'm trying to give you new wine skin right here. If you would just get up in the morning and invite me into your day, it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect, but I'm going to be in it. My character's going to come through you. My wisdom's going to move through. You can't do none of it on your own. But he says, but if you can be in me and I can be in you, I can do what no man can do because I am that I am. And that's what he says. So tonight I believe he wants us to imagine putting on new wineskin. Can you get into it for me, please? So let's use our imaginations that he's given us. Because what's happening is your character is going to change. But the character changes as the wine sets in the new wineskin. Because right now it's all pretty and brand new. It ain't stained up. It looks kind of good. But as the sun hits it and the wine starts to ferment and it gets kind of nasty all inside, and, but it produces sweet wine. And I feel like he's saying, you're sweet wine to me. But there's a process that the wine goes through in the wineskin. And he says, see yourself in that process. Because you and I were in that process. Our characters are being changed. And they have to. You can't live over here in your, the way you do everything. You have to come over here and follow the leader being God the way he does it. He doesn't want you to be stubborn. He doesn't want you and I to be dug in because this is what we do and this is the way it's got to be. That's not okay. That's pride. He doesn't want us to be lackadaisy either or, or non-confrontational where we run from everything because we don't want to deal with somebody not agreeing with us. He'll give you the boldness and the ability to have somebody not agree with you and you still be okay with that because you know in whom you believe. And you are persuaded that he is able to keep whatever you commit into his hand and take care of it. So whatever this disagreement may be or whatever is happening in our lives, we give it on to him and let him have it because what's supposed to follow then us is his peace in here. Maybe not here and maybe like we're doing this because we're, I just did something that I don't do. But God loves that because now you're willing to do something that he wants to do. Got it? So this is Matthew, and I just want to read this. Matthew 9, thank you, Tammy, verse 16. It says, no, in red, that's Jesus. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins. Or else the wineskins will break and the wine will spill all over. And the wineskins are ruined. I don't want to be ruined, you guys. I know that the Holy Spirit is inside of me. I know that he is working, but I know it's time for new wineskin. I know that the wine that he has put in me has been pouring out and pouring out and pouring out and pouring out on people, places, and things. But I believe now. He wants me to step into new wine skin so that he can pour new wine in me so that he can do new things, new flavors, new abilities, new stuff so that I don't get stuck in the old, that I don't get religious and you don't get religious, that we allow him to transform us and that our character, that our character our character changes. Not God. He don't change. We change. Amen. And he wants us to change. That's right. But not according to our will, but according to his. 
And we can know his will through the word. We can know his will through hearing him. He gives us wisdom. He gives us grace. He gives us mercy. He gives us character. And when we invite him in every day, all of a sudden he starts to manifest instead of me or you. Because he's great. He's the great I am. Amen. So it finishes with, but they put new wine into new wine skin and both are preserved. Both. The wine skin and what's inside of me. Because what that is, it's the Holy Spirit. And he's going to be the one to do the changing in me. Because what he has for me, David, is pretty awesome. But if I don't follow him and I want to do my own thing and I won't allow these new things that he's pouring into me tonight to start to ferment and mature and become flavorful where they can be used by the Holy Spirit, I'm just going to be a bag of juice. I don't want to be a bag of juice. I want to be flavorful for the kingdom of heaven. I want to make somebody pucker. <laughs> yep. That's right. Or give me a sour face. That's like, right. what did you just say? Like, that's real. I, I want to see the Holy Spirit move out of me and cause the atmosphere yeah. to change. That's Doesn't right. wine cause the atmosphere right. to change? Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. He gives us great examples. I got to have a glass of wine and a bubble bath. Oh, I feel so good. I'm so relaxed. I mean, seriously, I, I am being very, very seriously not disrespectful, but you think about the, the way people use wine. That's right. And then you put it into the Lord and perspective and what we're meant to do. It's pretty amazing. Let's pray. Father, I love you, and I praise you for your word. <laughs> I praise you for your spirit. Thank you, God, that you just show up despite me and my day. Thank you that I hear your voice and the people that you've put in my life. Thank you that I receive the word that you bring through the people that you've put in my life. And I pray tonight that people receive your word that's flowing through me for all of their lives. Yes. That God, everything that they may have come in and they feel like they're a cracked, split, old wineskin, hallelujah. Amen. And I pray new wineskin on them tonight. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And pour new wine in, Lord, so that our characters can be changed to be able to handle the calls and the move that you have that's coming in Jesus' name. I, we are going to have our bonfire, but guys, I really want you to um, take the time tonight to let the Holy Spirit minister to you as we sing new wine. But I also want you to come and put your old wine skin down. Yes. If you feel like you're just a cracked mess and you're leaking, it's time. Let the Holy Spirit do something new in you and I tonight. Amen. Because he's amazing. He's amazing. Did you find it, Tim? Hey, Miss Lori, love you. Yeah. All right, you guys. God bless you. I pray that God's face will shine upon you. I pray that you will see who you are in him to a greater degree tonight. God bless you. And we will see you Sunday.